um, and we are paying off some more debt, um, which means that you can't build the cost of that debt into your tax cap. And that is the main reason why we're at 1.48 and not 2%. The overall increase is uh, 1.98 budget to budget. That's the $2.5 million um, increase. Um, on the next slide, we talk about the revenue. Um, miscellaneous sources uh, is going down by $323,000. Um, state aid is an assumption that $1.3 million is an assumed amount from the state. The state has a proposed budget. They don't have a finalized budget. Um, that number can change. Um, the appropriated reserves, we are adding additional money um, from our ERS reserve to bring um, the budget down. So um, we're looking at uh, $2.236 million from the ERS reserve uh, to appropriate it into that column. Um, fund balance is going to stay the same, so we're bringing $2.5 million from uh, our appropriated fund balance. Um, our pilots um, is a LIPA pilot, and um, that is uh, $1.347 million. And our tax levy, as I showed on the previous slide, is $93.2 million. When do we? Can we ask as we go along? Sure. Do you want us to wait? No, 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 you can ask as we go Could you just give a couple of examples just for everybody of the miscellaneous uh, sources and why there's a drop? What oh, missile. Oh, yeah, that, that one's easy. Um, okay. Our lease with Schubert School it is a year to year lease, um, and we've not gotten a commitment from Unionville at this point, so it is possible as of right now. Um, it is possible that Uniondale is not going to uh, renew the lease for Schubert School. So that's that total amount right there. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Could it be revised before we accept it? Could it? Is it likely to um, us to work it out before we accept the approve the budget, or would we? Like how would that? Um, if we can't talk about that. Hard to know. Um, our per pupil expenditures of uh, Baldwin's is about $25,600 per student. The Nassau County average is about $27,500 per student. Um, the highest per pupil expenditure um, based on the information that we have, this is based on the 16-17 school year, which is the most recent published numbers, is $39,187 in Lotus Valley. These rates are established for us. Um, tuition rates are established by New York State Education Department. So if we receive full day K-6 or 7-12 students, those are the tuition rates that we're allowed to charge. Um, and uh, full day K-6 special ed or 7-12 um, special ed, those are the rates that we're allowed to charge. And again, those are rates that are given to us by state ed. And would you just like to comment on how we would take in tuition paying students under what guys? So um, we will take in special education students. If a surrounding district has a special ed student and they don't have a program for that student, we have a program and an available slot in our in our um, program. We will accept those kids um, at mm -hmm. those tuition payments. But we do not take in tuition paying students. Correct. Do we have any cost just we do. Yes. yes. That's why the majority of that is close to the Yeah. Uh, and when you see that on the revenue line, the majority of that revenue is coming from the Any So just, you know, something that we put in, some um, new programs and Baldwin traditions. Um, we continue to up grade our use of technology in our classrooms. Um, and you'll see a presentation on that tonight. Um, we have uh, redesigned our learning spaces. Um, that has really put us um, in a very favorable light, not only in the education community, but in the community in general. Um, we continue to do professional development. Uh, next year, we have some highlights of professional development. We brought um, Teachers College Readers Workshop at the elementary schools. Uh, we are doing continued professional development in our middle school. Uh, we're 
ramping up for the changes at the secondary level in mathematics. And uh, we continued uh, to do some science professional development at the elementary school. We are hoping to uh, roll out our education academy in September. Uh, we are continuing um, AVID, but we are we opened up uh, two sections in seventh grade this year. This year was the first year for eighth grade, and we're going to bring an AVID as an elective to ninth grade so that the kids who are in it can continue for one more year, and students that we think um, going into ninth grade who have not been part of AVID in the middle school, but we believe will benefit from that in the transition to high school, we're going to open up a section for that at the high school. Um, our Hastings Academy was changed a bit this year. Um, we added a new uh, CTE program which um, is a um, medical office assistant. Uh, so we have three CTE programs at Hastings Academy um, this year. Uh, we are bringing in NAF, which is the National Academy of Finance, and that is uh, through our Global Business Academy at high school. That program it has a rigorous standardized curriculum uh, for uh, the folks, the kids that are involved in the business academy. We continue to reimagine our middle school program. Um, I will tell you that I met with the consultant who's doing work at the middle school, and um, she is extremely excited at the progress that we're making there. Um, the difference from last year and this year, she said, is remarkable. And um, the, the quality of the teaching and the ability to think differently about how to do middle school has seen a dramatic shift in a very short period of time. So that was really positive news. Um, we have our elementary STEAM program that we started um, in grades four and five um, that is doing phenomenal. Um, we are not expanding it next year. We're gonna keep it the way it is in fourth and fifth grade and, um, and, and see how that goes and reevaluate again next year. Not because it's not great, it's phenomenal, but um, it is working the way have it right now, so we're going to live with that for a little while. Um, this year we did Algebra for All, um, and we continue that. Uh, we are um, exploring the possibility, not next year, but the year after, of um, accelerating science for all eighth graders. Um, but, yeah, The Algebra for All, I know we just started, but I'm wondering, what we're going to do, we're just going to have second period. To see, like, do we know yeah, don't, don't, nothing to share yet, oh. but we are, we are definitely looking at that okay. and monitoring that. Um, we, are, we have um, been doing a lot of work with outdoor gardens, um, indoor gardens, and outdoor learning spaces, and we will continue to build upon that next year. Um, we uh, brought TC Writing, Teachers College Writing Workshop, to the middle school, which has been going really well. Um, the reading workshop at the elementary school and our new course, AP Seminar, next year and AP Capstone um, the year after which the board approved uh, a couple months ago. And then, of course, our traditions of blue and gold games, our fine performing arts program, which is outstanding, um, sports night, our athletic program, which is, um, I mean, we have the wrestling champs this Saturday, our girls and our boys basketball team are doing great. Um, Saturday Night Alive continues, our Academy program continues and we continue with our um, intramural program. Um, our redesigned learning spaces, these are some of the pictures of three of them. Our kindergarten class at um, Plaza, uh, our, a social studies class at the middle school, <coughs> and a, the um, science classroom at the high school. Um, so we continue to do that work. We've had 47 teachers this year ask for a redesign for Again, the expense side of the budget, we're going to look at two um, tonight, the administrative uh, part and the capital part. And these three are, um, those is what the state says, the way that we need to present it. So the first slide is always going to be the overall. Um, so overall, the administrative, which is in capital letters, I mean, in, in quotes, um, and there's a change of $582,997, and we'll break that out according to the different components. Um, in function code 1010, which is the Board of Education, um, 
we've seen an additional $25,500. Um, that is for the part-time person who is organizing the, uh, the board policies uh, and doing that work. Under district clerk and meetings, um, you see a reduction of $6,500. Um, that is because last year we needed to put money in for um, uh, way more paper ballots that we were required and then um, they changed their mind and changed the formula by which that we had to order those ballots. So we're able to reduce that down to $6,500. Chief Administrator's Office, that is my total office. Um, there is a change there of $19,560, and again, that is um, not my salary. That is uh, the total cost of, of my office. Um, the total cost of Steve's office um, is uh, function code 1310. Um, in there, there is um, added a long-range plan cost to BOCES that is now required um, that is required for us to do every year. Um, so there was a cost to us um, for that service. Um, our auditing is pretty flat. Uh, we have some built-in um, flexibility there. Um, that's our the anticipated change. Um, treasurer is pretty flat. Um, the legal is reduced. Um, because this is one of the areas where the cost needed to go into the program portion of the budget. So this is one of those examples of where you'll see a decrease, but it's not an actual decrease in dollar amount. It's a reallocation to another part of the budget. So anything legal that had to do with program is now in the program part of the budget. Um, human Resources, again, is all of Dr. Gallo's office. Um, one of the, the uh, added um, changes which caused a little bit of an increase is um, the, the what we're trying to do is bring the HR component of WinCap um, so that there's the, the data across things is a little bit more in sync. So a good portion of that is related to um, exporting data um, and my learning uh, planning for WinCap. Um, the public information function code 1480, the dollar change of $64,000 is due to um, bringing DKC on board. Central data processing, that extra $12,000 um, is mostly uh, to BOCES. It is non-instructional technology and that is um, a cost associated with VMware, Bowtie, and our wide area network. Bowtie is the white is is the network that connects all of us um, to BOCES and out to the internet. Um, function code 1910 unallocated insurance. That's a reduction in our cost for NICER. Um, school association dues. This is at uh, board level, so this is New York State School Boards, National Suffolk School Boards, um, National School Boards, Refit, and the Chamber of Commerce, that code is state black. Mm -hmm. uh, administrative, um, um, administrative charges, uh, BOCES, function code 1981, this is a cost that is given to us. So every school district pays an administrative charge for BOCES. And this is a number that's given to us. So right now, we're, um, this is a best guess, um, but, we, but this is what we believe um, the cost will be for the 18-19 school year. Um, and that participate, that is required um, every school district pays it. Um, it is to keep BOCES going so that they can provide the services they provide and allows us to get state aid and other parts of the budget for um, things that we do through BOCES. So we wait for BOCES to figure out their budget and then 
something that tell us what our portion is. So this could change. That could change. That's our best guess at this point. But at some point, we will get that number. Okay. Um, included in that um, is um, administrative stuff and also real estate. So for example, they're looking to purchase a building in North America. And if they, uh, if, if they are, if the voters approve that, um, we will actually see this go down. Okay. I think it's next week. Yeah. I was just going to say we should, we should announce it during the tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. tomorrow. It is tomorrow. It is tomorrow. Oh my gosh. I thought it was And tomorrow. the closest one to us is the one in Garden City. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So we saw actually a reduction from when they bought the massive people building. Um, this is the second building. <coughs> Under curriculum development and supervision, this is all um, Mr. Mignella's office. Um, the change there is mostly due to um, uh, cost to uh, participate in AVID. Supervision regular school, um, the, the uh, ch dollar change of $431,000 um, is uh, the additional two APs. One in the high school, one in the middle school, and a reallocation of um, Dr. Murray from one code into this code. So again, you see a reduction somewhere else where she came out. Did her entire salary come out of that code into this one? Not just okay. So under research planning and evaluation, this is our participation in University of Chicago's Five Essentials program. So that is that. Um, under administrative salaries, um, the three codes there are, um, um, well, it's partly. So um, we have three administrators um, in the function code 2250, one in 2810, and one in um, 2815. Collectively, it is special ed guidance and athletics. Um, so again, the change here is mostly due to coming out of one code and into this code. Um, and um, that, that is continued with that ESA, um, those ESA changes. So they were, some of those were in some <laughs> They were in other, they were in program codes and they were moved into administrative okay. codes. Uh, administrative benefits, the one thing that um, is here is the, the, the large number at the bottom, um, which is a uh, change in cost of um, hospital medical insurance. Um, the total capital budget, so that was administrative, this is capital, um, is uh, the total change in all, the entire capital budget is $55,000 about 0.35%. Included in this um, is, is this function code 1620 is all custodians and cleaners. Um, we have added some um, cleaner positions that were left vacant for a long period of time. Um, so that is in there. Um, Anthony DeLuca's salary is built in here. Um, overtime increments are built in here. Um, under contractual, there are some additions to um, utilities. Um, our BOCES health and safety um, work is built in there. And supplies, our cleaning supplies, toilet paper, and things of that nature. Okay. Um, under maintenance, um, that is our grounds and ma maintainers, our plumbers, our electricians, um, that. Uh, piece. Uh, the salary change is overtime, but it's also bringing the cost to the actuals from the prior year. Um, and the total change there is uh, almost $58,000. Can I ask a question about something that's not up there, but yep. we're running by it? The water usage tax, is that mostly for um, irrigation of the grounds? No, that's, that's, you remember a few years ago? Yes, I do. We carry that. Or until they, finally, until they finally, finally tell us they won't. Ah, they uh, haven't okay. said they will, but they haven't said, said they, they won't. won't. 
Okay. So we okay. Yes, I was very involved when that was first proposed, and I was surprised to see it here. And uh, okay, all right, now I get it. Um, under security, uh, under salary, oh, yeah, under salaries, uh, this is actually to align with um, the actuals um, of the cost from the prior year, and under contractual, that is to align with the actual cost of summit. So it's not an increase, it's to bring it up to what our, the prior year actually cost us. The east of the salaries, which is our security needs, and contractual, which is summit. So that contractual for summit is that's all is that all summit the increase? The whole the uh, pretty much, yeah. Is that and that's based on what we actually what it actually cost us the prior year. Yeah. Okay. Just, although we budgeted less, we budgeted less. It cost more, um, and in some cases, um, from a number of years ago, there were lots of things that were budgeted less but cost us more. And every year, we've been bringing it closer to what it actually cost us. Yeah. Is a contractual piece of it? Um, or it is the ca are cameras in there in that somewhere? <clears throat> Not in that. Not in that. Okay. Um, under capital benefits, again, this is pretty flat. The only major change in here is the last um, piece, the sixty-seven that sixty-two thousand, which is also medical the cost of medical insurance. Um, so here is where you see. Um, the transfer to debt service. So because we're paying off debt service, um, that's why our tax cap is not 2%, it's the 1.48. Um, you can see here that we paid off that debt, and so that um, budget code is going down by almost $500,000. So uh, this is just a little animation of um, how the tax cap is calculated. There's a quiz at the end. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> New York State's property tax levy cap. What is it and how does it affect our public school? Or, to put it another way, where is a 2% tax cap, not a 2% cap on tax increases? In New York State, that's where. Why? Because despite being touted by some politicians and the media as a 2% tax cap, the law does not prevent your school tax bill from increasing by more than 2% each year. So what does it do? It requires each public school district to calculate a tax levy limit each year using a complicated eight-step formula dictated by the state. How complicated, you ask? Well, you start with the prior year total tax levy. Wait, what's the tax levy? It's the total amount of property taxes a school district collects for property owners to balance its budget after accounting for state aid and any other revenue sources. Back to the formula. Start with the prior year tax levy, multiply that by the tax base growth factor. Present and file payments received in the prior year subtract any tax levy in the case of court judgment, but not if they are tax per year. Also subtract capital costs, payable local tax dollars, not state aid, and multiply all that by 2%, or the change in the consumer price index, whatever is lower, and subtract idle payments expected in the coming year. And the available carryover, which is anything left over from last year's tax levy limit, is less than 1.5% of the limit. And you have this year's tax levy limit. You get it? Yeah, me neither. But did you catch the 2%? Let's go back. <laughs> One of the eight steps involves adjusting some costs for inflation using the change in consumer price index or 2%, whichever is less. And then you continue with the formula. That's where the 2% comes in. 
Now you have the whole story. Last spring, 52 of the state's nearly 700 That's districts had a tax level. levy limit equal to 2%. 488 districts had a tax levy limit greater than 2%, and 129 districts had a tax levy limit less than 2%. One district had a 25% increase, and another had a 41% decrease. So the tax levy limit isn't 2%. It's whatever the state formula says it is, and it will be different for every school district. But whatever the limit is, taxes will be capped at that amount, right? Wrong, because the limit isn't a limit. It's just a threshold that determines what level of voter support a district needs to pass its budget proposal. If a district decides to propose a budget with a tax levy that is more than its tax levy limit, that district will be a supermajority, or at least 60% of voters, to approve its budget. If the proposed tax levy is at or below its limit, the budget passes with just a simple majority. By the way, there are certain costs called exclusions that the state says aren't subject to the tax levy limit, but districts still need to pay those. They're part of the levy, just not part of the limit. And don't forget, all of this applies to a district's total tax levy, not the tax rate, not your tax bill. Tax bills are also affected by other things that have nothing to do with the school district, like state equalization rates and local property assessments. Even if the district were increasing its levy by exactly 2%, what you'd see on your school tax bill could be entirely different. So, in review, it is not a 2% tax cap. In fact, it's not really a cap at all. It's a voter threshold. And the law was never designed to cap your tax bill. It applies to the levy only. What does this mean for your school budget? At the end of the day, the tax levy limit is just a number. School leaders still have to do what they've always done, weigh the cost of providing a quality school program with the community's ability to pay for it. To find out more, visit your school district website, attend public meetings, and learn more at educationspeaks.org. There's a so, just along those lines, so they mm -hmm. talked about, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to understand mm -hmm. why we are, so that, below, so we paid off debt service or cadre payments, decrease, so it, it takes that, so if we had the same debt service, our, our, our tax cap would be around. Be higher. Yeah. Be higher. I don't know how close it would be. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, so now, over the last three years, we said that where the yes. service has gone down. Correct. So the, one, the first time that happened, we were Correct. negative. Right. We, so my, part of my concern now is when you talk about the bond, but when we add the debt service on, we get the opposite. It right, so it's recalculated, though, right. with that built in. So, so your tax cap will go up. up. Right. Because it will account for that. Okay. Right. The, the, right. The, 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 It'll do have a reverse effect. Right. Right. So, so you know, my, my concern is when we lose so much debt that we have the debt on, we, so like we get a tax levy that's like that allows us to save from the cash and be at four percent, but there's no way that that we would look at that and go, well, we can't really look for that because it's it's not two percent. And to, not to right. get too esoteric, but I called Dr. Draper about the tax base. Base growth factor, which they did it wrong at first. Right, the districts got wrong numbers, mm -hmm. and somebody actually, school business officials, found the error, and it has been recalculated. But there, yeah, oh yeah, oh. oh yeah, and I mean, I, this is very esoteric, so <laughs> I, I'm not going to go on and on about it. But but it affects. Some districts where there has been, it's, well, for everybody else, it's based on the actual brick and mortar construction in your districts and sort of best budget. And there were districts where there has been a lot of building. And yes, they could go to four or five or six or seven, but they can't because publicly they can't do that in theory it allows their cap to go up, right. but the reality is that you can't go out to the public right. with that kind of an increase, even though it's legal. Right. So it's, it's one of many, it's like you said, it's, it's yeah. one of many factors. So I just, I, you know, I think, well, because I was looking at the debt service, and like, 
I think next year we're kind of flat, but then we want to travel over a million dollars. And so I um, yeah. wanted to, you know, like put, a, let's put that in our heads. Yeah. Like, yeah. That drops off Wait, and right. have fun. Right. right. It's going to change. So we right. do have, you know, because we engage different architects, we've been um, doing a couple things. We've been looking at um, what projects we want we want to propose this year to come out of the capital reserve, um, and we've been looking at other parts of the district where we think um, we need to do some work. Um, we're just not ready to have that conversation yet. Why don't you ask, ask the question you want to talk about? I guess I don't know if really a question for us, but we no, because it's on the budget. Okay. There's um, the oil, the, the fuel bill for each building is very high and we had discussed the fact that the buildings have gas and oil right left so how close to we are are we to eliminating the oil factor which would help those bills i know initially it would be a cost to do that but maybe the savings as far as not buying that fuel would be long term. Yeah. The answer is what happened was when you put fuel uh, burners in before at that point they were you were able to get it through the gas utility. They come in with connection. That stopped. And they actually that part of the organization. Task to do is doing that, but reorganized without a business. So they're not fully connected at this point? So they're not connected because connecting them is quite expensive. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things we have to look at over time is kind of reconnecting connecting them. And in the last few years, while that's been hard, it's the cost per therm hasn't been Oil's been cheap enough so that it wouldn't make as much economic sense as it has at some points in the past. So we'll be looking at that as we look at our projects going forward, capital projects and our capital reserve projects. Have we revisited um, checking into whether or not any of those programs have been reinstated? The programs have been reinstated. We keep an eye out for those. It was sort of a, a small window that happened a few years ago. A lot of us got caught with the burners and no workers. Can you um, help me understand the exchange for it a little bit? I know you did it on price, but I'm still unclear about the contractual amount for Summit. So being that, well, I guess side question is, in terms of, is there an RFP that's done? How often is RFP continue to be done with Summit? Like, what's that relationship? Can you talk to me a little bit more about that? How does that work for Summit? I mean, I don't, I do not know when the relationship started, started with them. One of the things we can do this year is evaluate and secure and what we expect out of the company and the security companies. I know that we've been looking for a few years. I'm not sure what, how we went about that process. They were all the same time. They were all the same time. Well, some of us, that's when we started with them, was, was because they were one of the few, very few, most, I don't even know if there were at the time, time as anybody else. Yeah. So is this like a 10-year disposable? Well, it goes on five years. It's just that we don't, whatever you want. Whatever the state contract. Meaning that there's no, so when's the last time we like, compared that to another one? We haven't, we haven't done an RFP. We have not. And, we, and the answer is we're saying we don't need to because it's like we're we're the, the way it is clear on that is we're not required to. Right. And one of the things we've talked about with our we have a, a OCs, relationship with OCs on health and safety is what are other districts finding on this? And what, how do we find our service relative to their services? And what are our options? And that's one of the things I believe we actually have another one of those meetings tomorrow at 8 a.m. Yes, we Thank you very much. <laughs> I only asked for that background information because. While you said the, the proposed budget is based on how much we've, we've spent, it's interesting that what was actually budgeted is it's not as much. It's not as much, and so I'm just wondering: Does that mean that there are? Is this an area of opportunity where we can be paying less for that type of service? 
the, the issue with this is that the it, change of Does this go back a few years? It does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. If you go through, uh, go through this, the year of certain events happened, Sandy happened. That was an event. We did have happening, uh, was, I, I'm sure, pretty sure something happened last year too. I don't know if it was pipes burst, you know, something like that. When there's an event like that, we have more, we're spending more. So we're there's part of the service. hope that the following year, we're not going to see a major event that causes that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there's, there's a, you know, God forbid there's a, a disaster like Sandy or even other kinds of events just in the school itself, we brought on, we brought security on, more people, more hours have gone in. Right. I'm hoping for a better year next year. Uh, and, and part of me was like, do I, do I budget $685,000 or do I hope for six hundred and let's see if we can make it through? Right, and I think the, the, the way the budget is activated is based on how much you spend. Yes. It just brings me to... So to say other alternatives, especially if this is a, a relationship that's existed for 10 so, years. So we can, so we can certainly look on the state contract to see if there's anyone else on there, but to Steve's point, um, the, the, the choices are limited, and the quality of who's available um, is limited. When we started with them, you remember the conversations, Carol? there were very few choices and we looked around and there were, because of the sudden demand for security, there were little security companies popping up everywhere. And- Was that after Sandy Hook? A lot of it was after Sandy Hook. And all of a sudden, everybody was looking. So there were companies popping up and there were, <coughs> I have no personal situations, of districts that hired these groups that were, they just, there wasn't training, they weren't vetted, you know, but the marketplace was such that everyone was looking for security firms. This company at the time was state contract, so it was vetted. It, there was a solid business right. in place. Yeah, so, we, so we did that, but you, to your point, over time, our everybody's security needs and wishes have evolved and, and Correct. changed. Correct. So yes, as, as we go forward, I'm sure there's an opportunity to look now. Now I think there may even be other companies out there, but at the time it that we went with them, exist, there right. really was, this was curious, the only one like that the was really, yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. The increase of more driven by usage Yep. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Right. And, and we have had that conversation with the security expert who proposes. Um, we will take his advice on that also. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so again, the property tax cap of Baldwin is the 1.48. Uh, mostly because of our um, paying off debt. Um, there are no capital projects budgeted in the 18-19 school year, but we are looking to put a proposition that would allow us to expend the reserves that we have in capital um, reserve. When we have that? Um, so where the details are coming, we're waiting for some information from the architect. We should get some more information next week. Um, so hopefully by the next presentation we'll be able to spell some of that out. It might not be in detail, but we'll hopefully be able to talk about that. And again, this is really just a review. The, contingency, uh, the rules for contingency, um, the budget is defeated uh, twice. We have to go to a tax levy of zero, um, which for Baldwin would mean a decrease in the budget of one, almost $1.4 million. Let's see if we can just 
commit this here, this comment period, to uh, 15 minutes, we get three minutes a person, our usual practice. Uh, one, one attempt per person at a time. Um, there's there will be opportunities to comment later. So, with that said, Question. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, please. Can I give us your name and address? David Smith, 127 New York Avenue, in uh, Freeport. Um, I look forward to the school districts. I was just I'm familiar with the acronym RFP. I was just trying to follow request, request for proposal. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Robert Kugelman, 979 Van Buren Street. Uh, the superintendent mentioned that the cost per student was uh, $25,600. Uh, $25, and I'm curious what uh, denominator she used in, in figuring that out. How many students did you uh, base that on? That came, that came from, the, actually comes from BOCES, BOCES collection of information. It's a BOCES report that we received. That's why the last amount uh, was sixteen seventeen. Uh, we probably received it just a few days before I put it, put it together. Right, and so, they are so using, what's the I believe that they're using the school calls. I think they're using the budget to, and the number of students. I, you know, truthfully, I don't know the exact number they're using. Nobody knows the exact number of students? I, 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 actually, it's in the report. Yeah. Uh, yes, there is an act, There is an exact number yeah. that BOCES is using. Well, the number's wrong. I mean, are you counting students that you put on a bus that goes to a parochial school, for instance? I don't, no, don't know. You don't know. I don't numbers, know. Numbers, you don't know. Well, okay. I could look at the report. Well, I mean, that's what you're here for, to give us the numbers, right? You well, don't even know how many students you have in the school us. district and how many numbers you base the these numbers If you want the information, we don't come prepared with every single Yeah, you're not coming prepared. prepared. That's right. Exactly. Okay. It's a question? bogus number. Okay, thank it's you. It's a bogus number. The number is $28,000, uh, not $25,000. Okay. The number is a couple. We get, we get the I can see my seat. So thank you. Does anyone else have a question or comment? All right. If not, we're going to move into the next portion of the evening, which is this is our smart school. This is our hearing of about the smart school five. We have the pleasure of seeing you. man. <laughs> Okay, we've had our um, the estate. Well, let's start the contest. Yeah, the state, of course, this is the first part of it. New York State um, passed a bond act in 2014 that allowed them to go out and fund a very large amount of money that could be distributed to schools for four different reasons, one of them mostly being technology, and uh, as well as security, pre-K, pre-kindergarten, and getting rid of relocatable classroom units. Uh, so our share of this funding source is 2.6 million, and the expenditure plan we're going to review tonight is 2.4 million dollars of that. And that means we'll have a remaining balance of about a quarter of a million dollars that we can do another time for at a later, later date. The funds can be used only for one of these four purposes. Install high-speed uh, broadband um, or wireless internet connectivity, acquire learning technology for their facilities, construct pre-kindergarten facilities, <coughs> or install high-tech security features in school buildings. What we're going to focus on is are two of those is we're looking at connectivity through wiring and security, which is also wiring. So we're looking exclusively at a wiring project that covers both of those. And the district, we have had public meetings on this with the community members. We had a community input meeting on this uh, topic. We uh, presented the possibilities for this at the December board meeting, and we posted that proposal on the website. Uh, then we, we've had no questions from the public yet on that. And uh, then the next step, of course, is this evening, going over this, then we can adopt a final plan based on any input. 
uh, the two pieces we're doing is uh, providing additional network drops to each classroom, lab, and offices. So it's, it's a very large wiring project we're going to do, which will allow us to put drops in those in all classrooms. And we're also putting cabling in order to, throughout the buildings, to enhance connectivity between the closets, wiring closets. This is not necessarily my strongest point. I know how to get this up to the state, but um, I'm sure uh, others can jump in at this point. And what we're also looking at doing is composite cables, which is power as well as the uh, internet connection for the doors so we can do security features at a later date, which by the time we actually get this up and running, we can then choose at that point what the best way we want to use those. And really, that's it. We're doing a very simple project. It's a lot of cabling that will be in all the buildings. It'll vastly increase connectivity. And we, uh, you know, we're not buying any other equipment with it. It will be updated quickly. This will lay a very strong infrastructure for the district. I, my question, are we, is this going to include uh, Schubert and Milburn schools? I don't remember if we included Schubert and Milburn, and I don't believe that we did. Okay. The only thing it will do is connect the buildings to the other buildings, mm -hmm. um, but it's a wiring project that's really um, meant to create an umbrella for not only instructional uses of technology, but administrative uses and security. Um, so that it builds our infrastructure out for at least, you know, at least 10 to 20 years, um, which allows us to enhance uh, the way we do everything from cameras to um, attendance. Um, it's meant to cover everything. Now that the that has gone up to the state, it will go it to the state after, after, after tonight. tonight. Okay. After tonight. Uh, then what happens? You know, we have followed the guidelines. You know, it's within the guidelines that the state gave. So now, do we have a choice of who does the installation and the work on all this equipment? Do we have to send out our piece for that? Does the state give us guidelines for how we then go about? No, we just have to follow our own procedures. And okay. at this point, what actually happens is we have to then go to the state to facilities management to get approval saying that it's okay to do a wiring project. So we don't have to get state approval for wiring projects normally for smart school bond funds you do. So we have to get that approval. And that, that's been taking a long time. I was just going to say, we may not go long and then, the state have to to then when we have that approval, we get to submit the plan to the state for approval. And that's been taking a long time, too. And the good news is once we get that, is this is a reimbursement program. Yep. And we have set aside in our fund balance this amount of money so we would not dig into our reserves so that we have the liquidity necessary to do this all at once. We don't have to do it in drips and drabs as some districts have to do. And the reimbursements have been going very quickly. So once the work is completed, we send that up to them. We will, we will actually, I expect we'll be able to expect it. The approval process is long. The reimbursement process has been surprisingly quick. Yeah. So will we wait until the approval is done before we Forward with yeah. the, that way we will know what will be money at the end as opposed to starting it and then like, oh, yeah, well, we're not. No, we can't do that. Okay, just check. But we've done everything that we need to do, um, and because of the type of project that it is, um, we've got this whole thing laid out. So once we get the approval, getting from there to actually starting work, because we're going with approved, you know, licensed um, vendors, um, once we, we get that approval, uh, most of the work's done. What's the timeline on, for instance, in terms of the upgrading the cable and so forth? Mm -hmm. the project? So I that's a say. full cable. I mean, that's, that's right. lots it's of that. people doing a lot of wiring in Correct. all of our buildings. Oh, something like that. Um, okay. So we would never do that during school hours. Um, it's going to be an after school hour, you know, 3 p.m. till, you know, midnight kind of thing, right. um, or in the summers. And that will be dependent on when we get the, the approval. If we get the approval in enough time to be able to start work in a summer, right. it's not going to be this, this summer, summer, but right. a summer, um, then we'll start then. If not, um, it's it'll be work that is um, going to start after school hours. And that generally takes longer than. 
for that one to be long. But in terms of the um, cameras and that one seems that I guess that would take. So we've done a lot of that, a lot of work already. This is to to get it to the next level, um, and the camera part is easy. It's it's the wiring and the infrastructure that that, that so takes it's a lot. Of, it's just it's a very labor intensive project. And you can do. I mean, we've had people over some of the breaks do some kind of not related to this, correct? So they can do work over the breaks, right? Like not you know, summer obviously, right. but. Um, and, and, that, and that's, you know, sorry, one of the things that we'll do is we will set those parameters, right? So the after hours, um, you know, we might ask them to double the amount of teams to get it done faster. Um, you know, we might ask them to do multiple buildings at a time. Uh, but, it, you know, until we get the approval, right. there's really nothing for us to do, and we're going through the process. So this was the next step in the process. Sending it up to the state is the next step in the process. So this, yeah, so this is at no additional expense to taxpayers. Correct. Money will be given by the state, or we will be Promise. Promise. Um, my, my question is, if we have to go through this whole lengthy approval process, um, how do we, how did you guys come up with the, the dollar value for the expenditures if we haven't gone out to get the stuff? So we've been working with um, an approved vendor and OCs to do all of the walkthroughs um, to narrow down what we're looking for, the kind of cabling, the kind of cameras eventually that we want to put in. Um, that's not, that number is not set in stone, but it is what we believe based on state contract will cost. Okay. So this is the remaining balance, sorry. So that's oh, just like something. Okay, I was just making mm -hmm. sure. I'm like, yeah, yeah we're going to make sure we're not confusing all of them. Well, we don't know by the time we get it done. Right, so change orders. There could be change orders. Yeah. So yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. The pricing should go up. I was just going to say, so everybody's going, going out time, to do the same right. thing at the same time, which means that, that drives the cost up. And yeah, it's just like, it's not good. You're bad. I'm going to give you one more. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So then we need to adjourn out of the, of the hearing. We need a, I need a motion to adjourn by Mr. Three. Second. By Mr. Tools. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all right. Thank you, Justin. Okay. So we're out of the public hearing. Oh, we can think. Yeah, exactly. All right. So now we are in the general meeting. Uh, Board of Education accepts the minutes of the Board of Education meetings held on January 10th and January 24th, 2018. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Second by Mrs. Dreska. Uh, are there any uh, comments or questions? No? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Board of Education acknowledges receipt of the Treasurer's report for the month of December 2017, detailed in the Friday balance. So moved. Moved by Mrs. O'Hagan, second by Mrs. Street. Are there any questions or comments? <coughs> All those in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Right. We'll turn the meeting back over to Dr. Yes. So I'm going to just uh, announce a couple of things and then I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Mignola um, for a presentation on um, some of the things we've been doing with instructional technology. Um, but before that, I just uh, want to report back to the board. Um, a few things. One, um, which you probably saw on the news, is that uh, Plaza School was awarded the New York State School of Character um, and Meadow um, as honorable mention. Um, that was a very rigorous application pro uh, program. Uh, there were only four schools in all of New York State that were awarded uh, the New York State for schools, not four districts. Um, and there were only um, 65 in the entire country uh, that were given that award. And Plaza now goes on to the national level um, to uh, see if we can be awarded that um, at, at that level. So um, it was a big celebration. We uh, unveiled it to the kids on Friday. They were absolutely adorable um, and so excited uh, to win. So um, the <coughs> video is either on our website and or it will be linked um, on our website because Channel 11 carried that. Um, I, I, 